Hi boys and girls, Miss Kathy here from Shaler North Hills Library and we are doing another episode of Stupendous Summer Science! And we are outside here today, actually on the side garden of Shaler North Hills Library instead of on my back porch. So we have a beautiful space here on the outside of our library that you are welcome to come out and read in and sit in. And that's what I'm doing today as we read a book together. Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment by Zoe Persicle. So let's see what Zoe has in mind with Georgia. On the inside page we get a lot of test tubes and beakers and scientific things. Those must be what Georgia uses when she's doing her experiments. This is Georgia. She comes from a family of fantastic artists. Her mother, father, brother, and grandma leave Georgia in awe of everything they create. Wow, look at all those colors. But Georgia's special. She dreams of being a scientist. From the vastness of the cosmos to the cell structures of plants and animals, she is fascinated by science. I'm having a difficult time getting these pages here to turn for some reason. Georgia loves studying the works of famous scientists too. She is captivated by Marie Curie's studies on radioactivity. She admires Galileo Galilei's discovery of gravity. She fawns over Isaac Newton's conclusions about the color spectrum. One day, Georgia has an idea. I've read countless studies and handfuls of hypotheses, but I have never created my own unique experiment. If I can do that, I'm sure to be a great scientist. And that's what she's thinking about while she lays on her bed. Need any help? Her mother asks. I can show you how to sketch out your plans. No, thank you. Let me give you a few tips, her father states. I think adding some color could really enhance your scientific findings. That will not be necessary. I don't know, Georgia. You need a pop of visual awesomeness, her brother says. I can show you how to sculpt something amazing. Enough! I don't need any help. I am not an artist. I am a scientist. Science is about proper calculations and not silly, imaginative ideas. Fine, her brother says. Don't be like us. Go ahead with your fancy schmancy calculator, books, and beakers. Hopefully your experiment doesn't bore you too much. Since my science-ness seems to be boring you, I can be found in my science hut alone. With a leap in her step, Georgia packs everything she can and leaves the house. Past the garden and through the gate, she runs into the woods. Let 
And there she is, sitting in the woods, looking at the nature all around her. Georgia can finally begin her experiment and be a true scientist. At first, she is having the most extraordinary time. But then she has some trouble getting started. I can study the color spectrum, but this has been done before. What about how gravity works? Wait, this has been done before too. I'll create my own radioactive material, Georgia says. But that's not original or safe, is it? Or just sighs. She'll need to come up with her own ideas to create something special. Georgia has the motivation, but where's the inspiration? How do scientists come up with such amazing experiments? What am I missing? But then, and an idea strikes. How does my family get creative, she wonders. Georgia tries something new, something that's not from her library. It feels odd for her at first, but with every colorful beaker she fills and each new shape she draws, her excitement grows. It is time to head home. Georgia makes her way back. What do you want? Rubbing your boring science in our faces? asks her brother. I want to show you all something, Georgia says. Science can be a work of art, too. And there, her beaker is magically overflowing with all those beautiful colors. Georgia's mom smiles. I bet you can teach us some fun science facts that will help us with our art. Georgia smiles back. And I bet you can give me some great art tips so I can invent more beautiful experiments. This is Georgia the scientist and her family of fantastic artists. They used to work separately, but now together they create sculptures, paintings, and experiments that leave everyone in awe. Even the family dog helps out. Georgia and her family agree, with art and science working in harmony, inspiration never runs dry. The end. So, we found that science and art can work together. So let's see about a science experiment using different colors and things right now. Stay tuned. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to Stupendous Summer Science with Miss Kathy from Shangler North Hills Library. And we are getting back to our rainbow tube experiment that we started yesterday with our rainbow crystals. And we soaked them overnight in water. And as you can see, they expanded a lot. There were just some little tiny rocks floating on the bottom before. And now we're going to continue with this. So it says we should pour them onto separate paper towels. And I don't think we're going to use all of these. So what I'm going to do is just scoop out some because I think all of them is more than we need. You can see they're very roly-poly here. 
I want you to take a little bit closer look. This is what they look like now. And we'll just scoop out a few more of them. And then we're going to scoop out some blue ones. Let them dry off a little bit on the paper towel. And then we're going to scoop out some yellow ones. Put them on the paper towel. Okay, so we got our crystals here. Then we're supposed to dry the crystals off as much as possible. So pat them dry here on the paper towel. Get the moisture draining out of them. Pat, pat, pat. Again, these super absorbent crystals are available online. You can get them from, you can get them in arts and crafts stores around here. You do not have to have the ones that I'm using. Okay, once those are dried off, oh, we have a runaway yellow one here. We are going to scoop red crystals into this baby soda bottle until it's less then one third full. So a little less than one third. So let's scoop some into here. Don't think we will need all of these ones either. Scooping it in. Well, oh, that's probably more than a third there. Shake it, tap it down a little bit there. That may still be a little bit too many. Take out a few more there. Okay, let's go with that, about a third full. Then we're gonna add a middle layer of blue crystals. And then we're gonna put our yellow ones on top. So, let's do about a third of the blue. And then add our top layer of yellow. Tap it down a little bit there. Okay, and then it says to push the crystals together as tightly as you can with your finger once we get these yellow ones added. So anything, any space left in here is going to be yellow. So we'll take our finger because there's two ones. Oops. I think I have flying crystals. These yellow ones like to go all over the place. Well, probably never find that one. Let's squish it down here so we can see. Oh, we got a lot more space in there when we squish it down. So we can squish it as tightly as we can for these yellow ones. And press down with our finger. We'll do a few more here, I think. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Kind of condensing it as much as we can. And then I'm going to quickly put on the lid and keep it in there nice and tight. Make sure the yellow crystals are completely overflowing out of the top and then squash them back into the tube with the cap. Okay, so we have to have them flowing out of the top. Let's do that. Screw the cap on and you've captured a rainbow in the tube. So let's do that. Take my fingers away slowly here. Putting our cap back on. And keep your baby soda bottle closed and watch the colors mix and change. After two or three days, open the tube and pour out all the crystals. So we are going to watch them change. I don't know that it's going to happen right now before our eyes, but we will check back in another day or two and have an opportunity to see how they are changing. Don't think it really matters if you turn it upside down or not, so I'm going to leave it standing just like that right there. We have all these extra crystals here. It says, if we want to let them dry out, 
in two or three days they will shrink back to their original size. So I'm going to try to put these red ones back in the jar in case we want to do this experiment again. We'll have them. And I'll put the blue ones back and the yellow ones back. So stay tuned for more of the rainbow tube magic as we explore what happens to this rainbow tube of crystals as the days go on. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hi, boys and girls. Miss Kathy coming at you from actually this recording room at Shaler North Hills Public Library and we are finishing up the rainbow tube experiment that we started. We had the different little colored discs and we put them in the water and dissolve them and let the crystals grow, our expando crystals. They started out with just red, yellow, and blue and we then combine them into this test tube, putting red on the bottom, then blue, then yellow up top, and we left them for a few days. And that was all after we left our original super absorbent crystals soak in the water and get bigger. So you can see that it has made a rainbow tube. Those colors blended together. So let's pour it out of this tube and see what we end up with here. We should have some new colors that were created. We have some beautiful mixed colors here. So I will let you take a look at these a little more closely. Let's see that we have all these different colors. We can let them dry for two or three days. That's about how long it would probably take for them to come back into their original size. And then add more water and enjoy them again. They would shrink back down to those original crystals that we had. So, again, these were a bought from Steve Spangler, but we have these other crystals you can get pretty much at any craft store, I would think. And they are super absorbent crystals. That is a bunch of technical names that I can't even say. Gel. The crystals were originally developed to help farmers keep water in the soil between waterings. If you look at the polymer with a microscope, you'll discover it's simply a long chain of molecules that absorb water. Lots of water. In fact, these tiny crystals soak up to 150 to 300 times their weight in water. So, and then they mix colors when you have them packed together, and that's how we get rainbow crystals. So, Stay tuned for more stupendous summer science with Miss Kathy. Hi, boys and girls. Miss Kathy here. And we are continuing an experiment we began after we read the fairy book about fairy science. And we were planting seeds. And we have some seeds here that we planted, the lima beans, in the Ziploc baggie with a wet paper towel. And you can see what is happening after a week or so has passed with our seeds. I'll hold them up here for you to see. We have one seed that sprouted and has some green on it. Some of the other ones are getting kind of mushy. There's another root on this one over here. And then we have another mushy one. So the experiment said to leave the Ziploc bag sealed up but I don't know, maybe they need the air moving around in there to do a little bit better and not get so mushy. So I think what I'm going to do now is try an alternate experiment and take this seed out and actually put it in a little dirt and maybe this one over here that has the root and see if it will grow. And maybe I'll do this again with some other lima beans and put them back in a bag 
but leave the top open and see if the air flow through helps them to stay a little bit fresher and then if we get better results. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Remember, science is an ongoing experiment and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We did get some seeds to grow, but they're not really going to go too far, I don't think, in this condition. They're going to kind of wither up and um, get mushy before they actually grow into plants. They got the root part on some of them, but uh, aren't doing too much more beyond that. So we'll try something different because that's what you do with science. You keep on trying. Stay tuned for more stupendous summer science.